we have prayed. Amen. Love him with a big hand clap, everybody. Love him, love him, love him, love him. Oh God, my good Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. What a joy to be with us in such a rich atmosphere. Yeah, and it's my prayer that our lives shall continue to be blessed and lifted to where God wants us to be. I'm very grateful to our own bishop for giving me this great opportunity to come and be a part of what God is doing in Maranatha. Please help me celebrate our father and mother in the Lord in this house. Help me celebrate them. Celebrate them, celebrate them, celebrate them. Oh God, thank you Jesus. Glory to God. Beloveds, we are continuing to look at how we can get to manifest the supernatural in our lives. Yeah, because manifestation is key to silence our critics. Yeah, for people to know we serve a living God. Yeah, and so we are continuing to push yeah, towards manifesting the supernatural in our lives. Yeah, and so please let's read with me Acts in chapter number four. Yeah, it's actually a continuation of the miracle that happened in Acts in chapter number three. Acts in chapter number four. Yes, and I start reading from verse 13. The Bible says, the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing right there among them, there was nothing the council could say. So they ordered Peter and John out of the council chamber and conferred among themselves. What should we do with these men? They asked each other. We can't deny that they have performed a miraculous sign. And everybody in Jerusalem knows about it but to keep them from spreading their propaganda any further we must warn them not to speak to anyone in Jesus' name again so they called the apostles back in and commanded them never again to speak or teach in the name of Jesus but Peter and John replied, Do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? We cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. Oh God, we can't stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. The council then threatened them further 
but they finally let them go because they did not know how to punish them without starting a riot. For everyone was praising God for this miraculous sign, the healing of a man who had been lame for more than 40 years. May God bless the reading of his word. Beloveds, be seated in heavenly places. Carrying a Bible Sunday after Sunday and the Bible never carrying your life. Is the most boring thing ever. I pray that we will not just carry this Bible. For days have come when the Bible must begin to carry our lives in the land of the living. They will look at us and see scripture being fulfilled in their very own eyes. Yeah, scriptures being fulfilled in their very own eyes because we have become the written epistles that are beginning to reveal the written word of God. Beloveds, witches and wizards have no time to turn the Bible and read. Your boss, your unsaved boss does not read that Bible. If that Bible is difficult for a church goer to read, what more your boss that does not believe in the God you believe in? And so if we will wait for them to know God by opening the scriptures, I'm afraid they'll take longer to know him. Time has come, fellow countrymen and women, when we must become the revealers of God. Yeah, the revealers of God. That they shall look at us and they shall see God on us. Yeah, we will reveal God in our workplaces. We will reveal God in the marketplace. We will reveal God in the streets. We will reveal God in our communities, in our townships. We will reveal God in our city. That is what God intends for his own. Yeah. The glory of sons is to reveal their father. Yeah. A son is not mature until he can reveal the image of the father. And it is my prayer that this world that has been groaning like a woman in labor pain for the manifestation of the true sons and daughters of God. This creation today must be able to see the manifestation of the true sons and daughters of God. All creation has been groaning like a woman in labor pain for your manifestation, for your appearing. Oh God. Meaning your delay to appear translates into prolonged labor over creation. Oh God. Creation goes on prolonged labor when the sons of God do not show up to reveal God to the world today. My good Lord. The world is in pains because true sons that carry solutions are not showing up. For as long as Moses was in diapers, Israel continued to be shambled by the tormentors in Pharaoh's camp. For as long as Moses was in diapers, for as long as Moses was not maturing, Israel continued in bondage. Yeah. But when Moses became of age, 
He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. The cry of his true identity began. Oh God. Jesus. He had to leave the comfort of Egypt. He left the palace. Because as the call in him began to trouble him, he began to try to use his power to deliver Israel. He found an Egyptian fighting with a Hebrew. He killed the Egyptian to save his people. Meaning the cry of the deliverer began in him. But he was not yet empowered and authorized to carry out the assignment. Uh -huh. The next time he sees two Hebrews fighting, the battle became complicated. He tries to come in between them. They asked him a question that he could not answer. Who gave you authority over us? Beloveds, there comes a time when your authority is questioned. Yeah. That time always comes. And when he was questioned, who gave you authority over us? He couldn't answer that question. That was one of the reasons why he ran away. And he had to meet the God of the burning bush. Uh -huh. So that he can receive some other training. He was, the Bible is clear. Moses was well schooled in the schools of Egypt. And he was powerful in speech. That's what the Bible says. But God had to introduce him. To a school of the supernatural. He met God in the burning bush. Moses, take off your sandals. For the ground upon which you are standing on is holy ground. Took off his sandals. Throw your stuff to the ground. Turns into a serpent. He runs away from it. God tells him, go back, touch it by the tail. It became a stuff again. But from that point, it was no longer the stuff of Moses. It became the stuff of the Lord. Uh -huh. put your hand in your cloak he puts it, remove it it becomes leprosy put it back, remove it it's restored back to its original state God is teaching him the supernatural because you cannot deliver a nation when you lack supernatural power Every nation, guys, is spiritual. So everything is a spiritual side. You cannot handle Pharaoh without power. Uh -uh, Pharaoh was one of the gods of Egypt. No wonder God had to make Moses a god to Pharaoh. Something needed to happen to him. God had to knock out fear from Moses. Because the way he ran away from that stuff that became a serpent. Was exactly the way he ran away from Egypt. Now the very distance he ran away. He had to run back and touch it. Because in the same way he will go back where he ran away from. So fear must be removed. You 
can never confront your Pharaoh when you are a coward. Moses is learning because he is about to be given a national mandate. He must deliver a nation from a nation. He must deliver a nation from the grip of Pharaoh and take them to the promised land. Beloveds, there are things we must confront in our families. God help me. My, 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 my. Listen carefully. You are not supposed to be where you are by now. When we look at the efforts you are putting in to rise in life, you shouldn't be where you are. Your family should not be where it is now. Uh -huh. But you are the Moses of your family. You are delaying to become of age and begin to confront what is supposed to be confronted. I came to announce in this revival conference that God is raising men and women that shall confront every pharaoh that has delayed the manifestation of God's purpose over their lives, over their families, and over their communities. Oh God, for as long as Moses was in diapers, and in the comforts of Egypt, Israel continued in bondage. Yeah, there's been prolonged labor in the life of your family. Yeah, should be better than what it is now. Somebody must arise and show up. There is a Moses in every family. There is a Moses in every community. There is a Moses in every city. Somebody must arise and confront what should be confronted. But we must encounter God. Yeah. I pray that may this revival conference become the burning bush where God meets us. That when we leave this encounter, we are not the same people. Not the same people at all. Something must happen to us. Moses encountered the God of the burning bush. Uh -huh. and when God told him, I've seen and I've heard the cries and I've seen the afflictions of my people. I am coming down to deliver them. And the only stairway God was going to come down was through Moses. I'm coming down to deliver them. I'm sending you there. You must go. I'm sending you there. And he remembered the question he couldn't answer. This time he needed to get everything right. And so he says, but when they ask me that who has sent you, what shall I say? Uh -huh. Go tell them that the God of your fathers the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent thee. The I am that I am, the Ahia, Asha, Ahia has sent you. God. He had to know the authority sending him. When you know the sending authority, you know what is backing you. I am here to announce to you, Makote Bakaya, that the highest authority is sending you back to your family, back to your community, back to your village, back to your clan, back to your workplace, back. 
work as a different man that will go change things. There are things we must break and deal with that have limited our clans, our tribes, and our families for years on end. Oh God, if you don't arise, prolonged labor continues. Your family continues to suffer. Some terrible wrong patterns continue in the family until a Moses rises up, until an Esther rises up to change everything. Oh God, my good Lord, may you encounter the God of the burning bush so that he will turn you into a strange sight. Make you a God to Pharaoh. Yes, I sense spiritual confrontations. Yeah, beloveds, we must confront some things. But we must confront them after encountering the God of the burning bush. Really encounter him. Then we can confront anything. I pray today. In this revival conference. Oh katapa kandalea. May somebody have her own encounter with God. Have your own encounter with God. Your own encounter with God. May God turn you into a burning bush. May he set you on fire. As you go to confront what has bothered your family for the past 40 years. God help them. Beloved. Some of us may be here. And we are generations behind. When we look at. Time and God's prophetic agenda over your life and my life. In every generation is a Goliath. Uh -huh. In the generation of your grandfather was a Goliath. If your grandfather did not kill that Goliath, that Goliath became a balance brought forward into the generation of your father. Your father had two to deal with. His own. And the one that came from the father that he could not destroy. Uh -huh. Knowing your father, he became so confused. To handle the two. He died without killing them. So two Goliaths became a balance brought forward. Into your generation. What your grandfather did not deal with. What your father did not deal with. Plus what you should deal with. You are facing three Goliaths. In your generation. And you want to pray. Popcorn prayers. Uh, you want to pray. Five minutes. if you are renting a house right now, it's sure proof that the Goliath of poverty was not killed <laughs> by your father and by his father. So, God help me. You are trying to kill what your father was supposed to have killed. What your grandfather was supposed to have killed. So, if I become more real, you've not yet started living your life. You are living the life of your grandfather. Somebody say, Lord, I need your help. Agently. 
That's it. Yeah. So, you are so behind in God's agenda. Tomorrow, I'll deal with acceleration. Something must happen for some people to catch up. We, we are here, Copertasia. Something must happen. That is why somebody must arise and begin to confront the issues from the spiritual dimension. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Are you ready to pray tonight? Are you ready to pray tonight? Yeah. We must confront some things. Yeah. Some things must be dealt with. The Goliath your grandfather could not kill will kill in this conference. That which your father could not kill will destroy in this conference. That which you should kill will kill in this conference. We will even go to the generation of your children and deal with their Goliath. God help me. Woo! That's what Solomon, that's what David did. David died fighting. A level where he went into the generation of Solomon and he killed the giants. And Solomon had no war to fight. Hence, able to have time to build God's temple. Too bad he also had too much time to marry many women. Jesus, there, there must be some confrontations that must take place. There must be genuine encounters. When you encounter the God of the burning bush, we must be able to smell the fire on you. God help me. The same thing, beloved, coming to the new covenant, the church in Acts, James, Peter, and John. Oh God. As they were going to the temple, found a man crippled from birth. Told him, silver and gold have we none. But such as we have, we give you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. Uh -huh. The man was healed instantly. Uh -huh. and, and these men, because they spent time with Jesus. Oh God. Because they spent time with Jesus. When they were being questioned by the Sanhedrins, the councils, they noticed that these men, though being ordinary men and unschooled, they speak boldly. And they said, these men have been with Jesus. When you meet the God of the burning bush, there's what you carry. We hear it in the way you talk. We feel it in the atmosphere you carry. Beloveds, any man of the presence carries a presence. Carries a presence all over you. My protocol officer is a witness. Uh -huh, because I believe in what I'm preaching. I'm going into a bank, Bank AB. Lusaka town. I was with him. It was the COVID time. So I'm entering the bank. The security officer is taking temperature. A wave of God's power passes in him. In her. So I enter the bank. She follows. We were together. She says, mm, when I was getting temperature, I felt the presence of God. Something passed in me. I said, yes. It's 
So even in the bank, when you carry God's presence, there's a presence that must follow your life. Ah, uh, I'm entering Chilenje. There's a filling station here. Again, I was with a pastor from Ruingo. I am standing on the till because I need to pay for some bread I've bought. The man next to me begins to feel heat on him. So I walk out. He fails to pay. He follows outside. And he asks a question. And says, who are you? I said, but what's wrong? He says, when I stood near you, I felt heat coming on me. It's his presence. I'm leaving UTH praying for the sick. So I needed to jump on a taxi outside. I get into the taxi. The taxi driver screams. And I say, but what's the problem? Says, Iwe, we are kakumenso. I said it is God. Spoke to him. The cab driver received Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior. Beloveds, I know how it is to be a natural man. I know how it is to be a carnal man. I know what it is to be a spiritual man who invests quality time in the word and in prayer until God becomes visible over your life. I pray today in this revival conference may somebody encounter God that wherever you go you will reveal him and you will confront what needs to be confronted and become one who will usher many into a great revival. God help me. Ah, we refuse to fall into traditions and cultures that give us a form of godliness that denies the power thereof. Oh God, my good Lord. These guys, they looked at them and they said, these men have been with the Lord Jesus. Uh -huh. And standing next to them is a miracle. It's a testimony. And so all the leaders of the Sanhedrin, they said, we can't deny what has happened. The church is standing without a testimony. That's why the world is denying what we preach. Time has come. When you will not stand alone, but stand with the evidence of God's power. Jesus. Oh God. My good Lord. Bishop there will be something happening in Kitwe. Because men and women, out of this revival conference, Aya Kopatasha shall bring several testimonies because they shall walk with evidence of God's power. For his word is not of enticing words only, but the demonstration of his power. Thank you, Jesus. I came to provoke us. Let there be a hunger, a thirst to seek him, to encounter him. Somebody begin to talk to him. Begin to talk to him.